um, Old Walton Bridge um, by Canaletto, and it was painted for the gentleman in the foreground, which is why I love it. It's one of the rare occasions when you actually have the patron included in the painting. This is Thomas Hollis who commissioned it. The bridge itself is fascinating as well, um, because it was an engineering marvel of the time, very picturesque, as you can see, white wood. But it's not the kind of little tiny bridge it looks. Actually, the span was huge. It was the biggest in Europe at the time. So it's an engineering marvel. But the thing I really love about this painting is that Canaletto himself is in it. You don't see Canaletto very often, and there he is. He paints himself actually there with his palette beside the river. And the other great thing is the sky. People say that um, Canaletto paints England as if, as if it's Italy, with these bright blue skies. Not a bit of it. He's seen some thunder and some rain here. This is an English cloud. So it pulls everything together. Sitting beside the Thames, his own self-portrait, a wonderful architectural wonder, and in the middle, Thomas Holland, master of all these events. and they're still in the Duke of Northumberland's collection to this day. Uh, so Hugh Smithson, as he then was, commissioned six works by Canaletto. These two, side by side here, are part of those six. This is my favourite, because this is a view from underneath Westminster Bridge. Canaletto painted Westminster Bridge more often than any other subject um, in England, and indeed he may well have been invited to London to do that, because the bridge itself was scheduled to open in 1747, Canaletto came over in 1746. Actually, it didn't happen. The bridge developed some problems with subsidence, and the actual completion wasn't until 1750. But Canaletto here has chosen a really interesting view. This is not the bridge structure itself, but the form on which the bridge was based. So the wooden um, engineering form underneath struck Canaletto as the perfect frame for the view of St. Paul's beyond. It looks almost as if it's painted by Piranesi or someone like that. It's a Piranesian view. This great arch. But just to bring it down to earth, he hangs a bucket down from the edge, which just gives you the clue that this is a building in progress, that above this amazing architectural form, there are men slaving away, completing the work, working on the stonework, pouring water over it, and the bucket is being lowered to the tent to bring up some water. And then beyond it, London, the perfect view of St. Paul's.
another favourite. Um, it's a view painted from the uh, forecourt of Somerset House, old Somerset House, right down towards Westminster Abbey. And there are some famous buildings here. There's St John Smith Square. There's uh, the Abbey itself. There's White Hall, which at that point towered over the other buildings. You wouldn't see that now. And what it records really is the bustle of a new metropolis, because London at this time is the largest city in the world. It's um, incredibly on a grander scale than Venice was. The river is vast. And Canaletto is looking at something that is effectively new to him. He painted this around 1750 to 51, and next to it is another view. He turned himself round and painted the other view down to the city and St Paul's. So these were meant to hang together. This one particularly interests me because of the details here. The courtyard of Somerset House was free for gentlemen and uh, civilised people to use and so you have um, ladies and gentlemen wandering up and down freely in the courtyard there with the view of the river. And then you have all of this river traffic going on as if it was Venice in fact, but we must bear in mind that London at this point, the Thames was its greatest thoroughfare and so all of this busyness was going on. The um, barge boys, the, the ferrymen who worked the Thames at this point were famously rude. They were um, foul-mouthed and horrible and it was one of the, t the horrible things that made uh, people think that we really must have a decent bridge by which to get across the Thames because we couldn't really face getting in another boat with these foul-mouthed boatmen again. And so Westminster was completed in 1750 and opened up a whole new era of transport across the river. But there it is, all caught in aspect.